What's up, everybody? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamie John. And we have an album review for you. And this will probably wrap up our reviews for the week of the 17th, because after this, we're going to be at MDF and headbanging our asses off. But we wanted to make sure we got like a full week of reviews in for you. So we had one more for you. And uh, we got some nasty death metal for you. So we're going to go over the latest offering from Cognitive, Abhorrence. Again, this also comes out on the 17th of May on Metal Blade Records. In fact, this is this band's Metal Blade Records debut. This band formed in 2011 in New Jersey. This is their fifth album overall. And, all right, kind of just went by the archives uh, just to see what they would say. This is described as technical, brutal death metal slash deathcore. I think we can pretty much yeet deathcore out of there. I mean, yes. yeah, it's got breakdowns, but uh, so does death metal. Anyway, uh, I've been listening to this band for a while. We actually became uh, friends with uh, their longtime guitarist, Rob Warden, who is super solid dude. And mm -hmm. yeah, these guys impressed the hell out of me live. Yeah, we saw them once at the Sanctuary in Detroit, and they were mind blowing there. I mean, super fast, intense band. I ended up buying like all of their albums, like every CD they had available because I didn't own any of their stuff. And generally, if a band wins me over live, that's kind of the first thing I look for if yeah. I already don't have one of their albums. Yep. Yeah, me too. If a band wins me over live, then they've won a fan for life because I will follow and, you know, go into the back catalog. I will follow from that point on because if, if you kick ass live, then you got it. Now, this band over the years, at least since from their beginning, you, you could probably call them deathcore, I think, in the in the very beginning. But they have a rather evolving sound. From record to record, they tend to change a little bit. And that could be due to the fact that they have a constant, like, revolving member door. Rob Wharton is the only original member left. Now, they do have AJ from Hoth on drums. And AJ is a killer drummer anyway. His performance on this record is absolutely nuts. But... He's pretty fucking killer to begin with. Anyway, so we go from deathcore, and then we get a little bit more technical, and then I remember there being a, a, like a lot of like melodic leads in a record for a while, and that seemed to be the primary focus. This record seems to be a, a culmination or a, a sample platter, if you will, of pretty much all that they have in their wheelhouse, all mixed into one record. Yeah, honestly, I would say like, all right, baseline, you could call this modern death metal. And I don't think anyone would bat an eye. They'd probably agree. But the more you go into it, you hear elements of tech death, brutal death. There's some blackened elements. There's definitely some mellow death in there, too. There's even some old school death metal riffing that pops up, too. Yeah. This is kind of a smorgasbord of all things death metal. I mean, right away, the opening track, which is the title track, I'll be damned if it doesn't sound like suffocation. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's suffocation with a different vocalist, like... Syncopated grooves, chuggy. It's got a nasty blast beat section, killer breakdown, harsh vocals. It it sounds like a suffocation song. It's got that heft of suffocation. Oh yeah, that, that Terrence Hobbs type heft to the guitar. It's just if you're a suffocation fan or if you've ever seen suffocation live, you know immediately what I'm talking about. But it, like it's there and it's there throughout the entire song. You're just like man. I've heard this. I'm not complaining. Oh, but never. I've heard this. <laughs> but the thing is, as the album goes on, you know, it, it starts changing. There's a lot of different elements that come into play. Like, the only thing that was unsuffocation-ish about that first track was the fact that there were some clean vocals that showed up. You know, intermittently on here, like, they're not on every track, but uh, the opening track, the title track, but they also show up on A Pact Unholy, uh, As the Light Fades, and Containment Breach. And they're done with kind of the same amount of variety as the riffs. Like, you get some different approaches to clean vocals. Like, the title track, it's a little bit more along the lines of, what, Fit for an Autopsy? Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, clean yelling. And it's layered with growls, too, so it doesn't necessarily come across as, like, straightforward cleans. But when you get down to a packed and holy, well, I mean, a good chunk of the song kind of sounds like cattle decapitation, but he actually has some, like, Travis Ryan vocal flips. The, the goblin flips, yeah. most notably. Like, because I had to do a double take. I had to actually look. Like, is Travis Ryan on this? Because yeah, I checked. It's damn close. You would swear to God up and down that it's Travis Ryan's goblin vocals. Yeah. 100%. And again, this kind of meshes up with the, the variety in here because, like, in terms of the riff work in here, it, it pulls from so many different camps, but it does a really solid job of blending it. Like, again, like a bass line, you could say modern death metal again. But, man, like, when this album decides to get flat-out brutal, it is just disgusting. Bone-crushing. Yeah, especially in tracks like As the Light Fades, Savor the Suffering, Rorschach, like, 
all these have flat out brutal stanky moments the verse on as the light fades and the verse on savor the suffering are heavy yeah flat out slam riffs yep. like you know dying fetus style slam mm -hmm. riffs but again it's a sort of ebb and flow that's on here like as the light fades for the most part i would say is a more melodic song yep. there's some really good like kind of melancholic strummed riffs it kind of gives it like a dissonant, almost blackened flavor. And the clean vocals there, I think, really work. They're a little bit more on the haunting side. But now that transitions into like a slow, brooding, disgusting breakdown, I think it's really cool. And there's a lot of awesome transitions in that song. And it's all like really well paced on there mm -hmm. too. Even the awesome clean break for the lead, which the leads in here, I think are all fantastic. I'm not sure if they're all Rob or their other guitarist whose name I probably should have wrote down, but <laughs> I didn't. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, but the lead work on here, I think, is really fantastic and, once again, like, very varied, like, this album. Yeah, like, as far as the dynamics are concerned, um, the song Lunar Psychopathy opens up with a brutal slam, and then it gets into this, like, tremolo tag syncopated groove, and the machine gun vocal cadences, like, they're, they're all over the map with this, and, like, everything is super syncopated, but yep. the vocals take the lead on that one, too, to further syncopate that chorus. And one of my favorite moments in that song is there is this absolutely insane descending chug pattern that's done like at the speed of light and it's really cool dude there are some like absolutely bonkers riffs on here like what i would call like swarming riffs where it feels mm -hmm. like you're being surrounded by like hornets and shit there's just these nuts patterns that pop up that are insanely technical but again it's more like riff oriented like it's not mm -hmm. just noodles and arpeggios right granted there are like tech death elements on here and they do show up on the album but they're not overly technical to the point where it's just sort of like wankery and taking away from the song yeah they're used sparingly they're used more as like tags on things like in some songs there's tremolo tags again in lunar psychopathy towards the end there's this cool dissonant tag melody that goes on the end of that insane chuggy descending riff that's really cool but it's that kind of wankery it's like shoving in just like little nuances in places like oh that was neat or yeah i would have never thought to put a tremolo tag on the end of that of course yeah. i'm not a guitar player so i don't think that way anyway but i mean mostly it's just stuff to kind of accent you know just like a straightforward chuggy riff yeah and you know they want to make sure they're like kind of like flavorful and this album has a very tight run time too like it's a little bit over 35 minutes most of the songs are in the three minute range there's only three on here that are over like the four minute mark but everything is very tight and concise. It gets to the point. In fact, in terms of atmosphere, there's only one real bit of additional atmosphere in here, and that is on Savor the Suffering, which might be the most brutal track in the album. Slow, groovy, heavy. It's so heavy, it made someone puke. Yeah, the uh, puke at the end is... Uh... It's quite chunky. Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely forced, I think. I don't think that was a, uh, hey, I'm about to barf, here it comes. Yeah. That was more of a forced barf, and it was, uh, there was a lot going on there. Pretty violent. I think the yeah. solid to liquid ratio in that barf, I think it favored more of the solid because it sounded like it was coming out in chunks. Yeah, just not what you want. Like if he was at like a cookout all day and just eating bratwurst and spicy mustard and then was just down in beer after beer after Jaeger beer. Jägermeister. <laughs> and then now someone showed up with a bottle of Fireball and like, all right, it's on. I am going to be friends with your toilet. Yes, and someone was. And much like any good friend would do, they recorded it. <laughs> as far as production is concerned, there's definitely an awesome guitar tone. There's a big, beefy, chunky, crunchy, chuggy guitar tone. The drums seem to be a little bit compressed. The bass, to be honest with you, sits kind of low in the mix. I didn't really openly notice it until probably like... The seventh or eighth song on the record, there's just, I forgot to write it down because I'm stupid, but there's a, a brief moment in one of the songs towards the end where there's a, like a little bass run that happens after the lead. Because again, most of the leads are pretty tuneful, very harmonic, like yeah. they're they're more lush and open sounding. So yeah, the bass was there, but it wasn't. Everything is really compressed, which. I get it's tech death, and sometimes to make everything heard, you want to have things run pretty tight. But the other problem I had, too, was that it's a little dry. Yeah, that's my main issue. Like, I get compression, especially when you got a drummer doing, like, gravity blast, hyper blast, right, and stuff like right. that, and frequent double bass kick. Like, yeah, sometimes that can muddy up the production if it's a little bit too much on the raw side. But it kind of is a little on the dry side, like... There's not a lot of reverb on stuff, and it, it just feels, 
I don't know, like a little lifeless, which sucks because the songs are anything but lifeless. Now this was mixed by the drummer, but also mastered by uh, Bart Williams, formerly of Black Dahlia Murder, which production wise, this kind of sounds a little bit like, well, a few Black Dahlia Murder albums. I agree. But also aborted, cattle decapitation too. Like it's just that style of production for this, you know, frantic, fast paced, just very brutal sound. But like I said, this band has a lot of different things they draw from. And, you know, sometimes you get like a really good mix of brutal and melodic or just brutal and blackened. The songs, like, you, you definitely feel like an air of familiarity to them because, like, style-wise, you're going to pull a lot of bands that, if you've been listening to a lot of modern death metal, you probably recognize. But in terms of, like, the direction they're going, I don't know. Sometimes they really throw you for a loop. Like, there's one track in particular that threw me for several loops, <laughs> and that is Rorschach, which, that's the name of my cat. And this song is smarter than my cat, because my cat's yes, an idiot. I adore his cat. His cat is indifferent to me, actually. He runs away most times when he sees me, which really, really breaks my heart, because I adore most animals. But, yeah. yeah, he's insane. He's Yeah, he's a total spaz. But, in a way, this song, it kind of reflects him, because this is probably the most technical, strange song on the album. As I said, most of this album feels like a collection of different influences, and it's really arranged well with, you know, again, melody, brutality, blackened elements, technical elements, occasionally progressive elements. This is kind of all of that in one four and a half minute song, and it it can be a bit much at times. I will state that a couple of the transitions are a little off, and I don't know about necessarily jarring, but like for the most part, Rorschach is a fairly brutal track. There's a lot of like dissonant melody parts that I really like because everybody knows I like dissonance and chug and it's in this song. But after it gets past the first breakdown, it cuts into like a clean section. And that I thought was kind of weird because although that clean section builds well into the second breakdown, which is sick, it doesn't necessarily fit. Yeah. Like, and it doesn't make me dislike that song. Like, I'm willing to look past that because it's full of dissonance and tremolos and chugs and things like that, all the things I love. I don't know where that clean thing comes in. Yeah, well, I mean, right, like, a lot of the transitions in that song, I feel, are very sharp. But, I mean, it's really based on, like, a lot of these twisting, weird riff patterns. It's very atonal at times. It's, it's kind of bonkers. Like, there are brief sections where... You know, it almost kind of sounds like Imperial Triumphant for a minute. But then it goes back to, like, the brutal chugging and such. But it keeps going back and forth. And when that lead break comes, when that clean section comes, it is, like, just such an odd shift in the entire mood of the song. It's just it's just weird. In the entire mood of the record. Because although the, the leads and such are very tuneful and, like, well thought out and harmonic, and those are, like, little proggy moments almost... It really just doesn't kind of fit the vibe of the entire record. There's not really anything clean, per se, about this album. Well, there are, like, more melodic sections when it comes down to lead breaks, like Ivory Tower. Yeah. Ivory Tower has, honestly, one of the flashiest leads in the entire album. It's awesome. I do like it. Uh, but, yeah, it gets, like, more, like, dissonant. And it's, it's notably more melodic. Same thing with As the Light Fades, which As the Light Fades might be the most melodic track on there just in terms of, like, you know, uh, some of the strum melodies. But, yeah, the lead break is actually pretty clean. And and while that's true, it's not as clean as what's in Rorschach. Well, yeah. That's that, that's a straight, like, clean break. Then in the build-up to those other leads is like, all right, well, you kind of settled in on this riff, and the rest of it kind of built towards it. It wasn't just this sharp little twist. And then when the breakdowns hit after that, like, all of a sudden they get these, like, twisted arpeggios at the end, like... Somewhere between, like, tech death and, like, botch. Yeah. Because, like, it's kind of noisy and squawky, and it feels like, I don't know, like, the whole song feels jittery and unnerving. I which like is it. cool. Like, I didn't hate the song, but I thought it was just, I don't know, it, it's a little odd. They must have, like, peeked in your windows or something, because jittery and odd is your cat. Yeah. Like, they were like, what are we going to name this song? Spare Ooh. parts. Oh, yeah, wait, no. Part. What's what's next cat's name? It's Rorschach. Okay, well, let's look at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's this song. Wait, what did you hear him call the cat? Well, he calls him dipshit, shithead, <laughs> moron, and fuckface. Uh, yep. <laughs> what the hell are you looking at? You know, other stuff. I've been known to just flat out call him a butthole, because it, it really does break my heart that he doesn't want to be 
a part of my life. It's not important. I mean, I kind of understand. So overall, I really dug this record. I'm going to go ahead and give it four stars. It's intense as all get out. It's extremely riffy. And although it is technical, again, it's not noodly. There's little like surprises thrown in as tags on riffs, whether it be dissonance, whether it be harmonies, whether it be, you know, little like tapping sections. It's not overly noodly technical wankery and that's what i really enjoy although a couple transitions may be jarring at times i can kind of see what they're doing like i like the direction that this band is heading in um, as far as continuing to evolve their sound the breakdowns in here are nasty the lead work is exceptional i think especially for a tech death band because of how tuneful and flavorful the leads are and like the lead tone that's used yeah. isn't that typical like shrill kind of trebly tone that you find in tech death like there's warmth to it and feeling to it so that was really cool vocally i like what shane's doing his contrast between his growls and his high-pitched screams and his yelling like all the things that he incorporates into these songs he pieces them in really nicely. AJ is a hell of a drummer. I have nothing bad to say about that man either. I'm a huge Hoth fan, so naturally I'm going to follow whatever that guy does. If you're a big fan of Suffocation, Archaic, Dying Fetus, definitely Aborted, definitely Cattle Decap, uh, the Black Dahlia Murder, maybe even little bits and pieces of like the Faceless when they were good, yeah, definitely check this out. I would highly recommend it. I'm going to go with a three and a half. I think this is a solid debut for their major label debut. Yeah. I mean, they were on Unique Leader. That's a pretty decent sized label, but I mean, Metal Blade's Metal Blade. And I think they went in just like, all right, let's pull out all the stops. And for the most part, I think that really worked. Like, there's a lot of cool dynamics on here and pulling from different influences constantly. Like, I like the melodic aspects. Mm -hmm. There's some just flat out amazingly heavy, brutal breakdowns. Like, Savor the Suffering... Dude, that thing's a pit churner. It'll knock the puke right out of your stomach. We know for a fact. Riff-wise, there's tons of them on here. Like, this is chuggy and just loaded with blast beats. I mean, it's lit up modern death metal. And literally, I could name off all the same bands that Jam and John did. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't need to because he already did. And it's accurate. Like, it's right in that line. Like, if you like suffocation, you will find elements of suffocation on here. If you love aborted, you will definitely find elements of a board on here but what i really like is the diversity and like how it's employed on here in terms of the songwriting sometimes it doesn't work as well like again rorschach was a little odd for me but you know i own him so you know he's, <laughs> he's been odd for a while and i like that this band is willing to keep expanding their sound over mm -hmm. the course of their albums like honestly all their albums have something different about them and that includes this one which is really cool again if you're a big fan of Boarded, Cattle Decap, Dying Fetus, etc. All the bands that he already said. <laughs> um, yeah, no, check this out. This is a solid album. And go ahead and check out the rest of their stuff because, again, you'll get like yeah. a slightly different album with each one, which I think is really cool. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel. Up in the banner in the bottom right-hand corner. But if you're looking for Thralls Metal stuff, go back to thrallsmetal.com. We have shirts, both old and new. The old ones are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats, too. So, if you're looking for any of that stuff... Put the link down below. And as always, tons of stuff going on at Thralls of Metal because that's what we do here at Thralls of Metal. If you've watched any of our videos in, say, probably the last six months as we've started adding on the thank you portion to the videos like we do, then you know that we always have stuff going on. Tons of album reviews, discography rankings. We're going to do Meshuga after we get back from MDF. This will probably be the last video you see from us, at least in this May 17th series, because we are going to be at MDF for the next week. Woo. And that's where we will be. And if you see us there, come up and say hello. We would love to meet you, talk, hang out, bullshit, music, whatever. Provided we can hear you or provided that we're not laid up somewhere because we can't walk and our knees hurt and our feet because we're old and you know how that goes. Hooray for Abby Proofing! But, but yeah, we'll be at MDF. If you see us, come say hello. Because of being at MDF, you're probably not going to see review videos. However, I'm certain that you will see short videos because you know, there's like 90 bands and we're going to see most of them and hang out and do fun shit, so you're going to get to watch that. But really, 
all the stuff we put up and all the things we do, we do for you guys. Thank you so much for each and every one of you that have liked, subscribed, commented, done all the things that you've done to help make Thrills of Metal more than just a YouTube channel, but a family. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Nick. Yeah, you guys absolutely roll, and uh, yeah, looking forward to MDF. I've been looking forward to this for a while, and it's like, you know, well, right now, yeah. like a few days away. By the time you see this, well, I, I might be trying to get some sleep before the fucking early-ass flight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or I might have stayed up all night, and I'm just going to be a train wreck for most of Wednesday. Have you seen the weather on Wednesday? What? 90. <laughs> Oh, God. It's going to be the temperature of Satan's butthole by the time we get to Maryland. Hooray. It'll also be 90 on Thursday. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's going to be hot. So, yes, we will be in Maryland getting cooked alive, apparently. But, uh, no, seriously, thank you guys for every bit of support you guys have given us. And, yeah, uh, it's amazing doing this still because of you guys. Yeah. So, one more big thank you, and we will catch you later.